Recording, we are live. Nice. Okay, hello everyone, welcome to another URB interview. We are joined today with Dick and Dom. Hello. Hello. Um, my favourite bit prior to you saying welcome Dick and Dom was you said, we're recording, we're live. <laughs> Which one are we? <laughs> are we recording or are we live? Well, when we play it out, we hopefully it will be Can't live. Can't be live, it's midnight on a Saturday. I don't think anyone will mm. be listening. <laughs> so many people party. listening. Uh, you are we have so many listeners. We'll Honestly. pretend we're live. Yeah, yes. We'll pretend we're live. Yeah. We'll do it this is live. This There's live. no There's edits to be had here. There's a red light in front of us, so, so that makes us live. If we say something wrong, you can't edit it. You've got to leave it in. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we'll have to leave no. it in. Yeah. Yes. No, we'll just act like it's live, but if you're listening back, it is not live. Um, <laughs> all right, so the first question we wanted to ask is how you guys got involved in TV in the first place? Uh, hospital radio for me, actually. So, um, yeah, back when I was 12 years old, I started doing hospital oh, radio wow. at a children's hospital in Sheffield, where I came from, uh, and just carried on from there and just kept going and then became a tea boy. Actually, I was just about to go to uni, but I actually got a job as a tea boy at the BBC. So I started there doing that as a runner uh, and then just carried, carried on working my way up. How on earth that did you start me. at 12? At 12, I know. <laughs> how? That's mad, isn't it? I don't know, I used to watch kids TV and go, I want to do that job. How do I do it? Wrote to loads of people and uh, people wrote back saying start in hospital radio. So oh, that's wow. what I did. Yeah. And I started off work experience at Gemini FM oh, in Exeter. Yes. Oh, wow. So yeah, West Country boy. And uh, on Saturdays, you used to go off and just sit <laughs> and watch <laughs> watch the DJs uh, host and how, how to do that and then then like Rich you know then pestered the BBC to give me a job and then eventually got a, got a break and then uh, and then 30 years later <laughs> here we are still still doing still it still going still doing yeah, it fell in love with it all those years ago yeah. it's kind of like yeah. us I thought I hopefully in 30 yeah. years time I'm still as oh, passionate will as be. you guys you are well, well, the good thing you've got the bug you two you've got the yeah. bug well the good thing about working radio as well is that generally people that start from radio usually end up working in radio Forever. until they retire yeah. mm. uh, until beyond retirement to be totally <laughs> honest when do you retire <laughs> in radio oh, well it's such don't. a wonderful job you know we're, we're, like Tony Blackburn he's like 90 isn't he he's still <laughs> doing it <laughs> but we're, we're very lucky that, that we, we've uh, did Radio 1 for two years which was mm. just amazing but now uh, even more amazing for us is that we're working for Virgin Radio we're just filling in for various people when they're, when they're, when they're taking a break but it's a, it's a dream job it really is absolutely really amazing. Is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And of yeah. course, DJing here at the University of Bath. Oh, yes. <laughs> the highlight, highlight of it your is. career. Um, so how did you guys end up forming the double act that we all know and love today? Well, uh, well, well, we, uh, we were hired as separate presenters. And on my first day, I went to the BBC Tea Bar and there was Rich getting us bacon sarnie. And uh, we just met and got chatting away. And then I ended up working with Rich doing the bits in between the programmes, the links. Very similar to radio, but on air. You know, I think I think they call it CBBC HQ now with Hacker the Dog. Yeah. All the bits in between the cartoons, yeah. which is very much like radio DJing, because you're basically the bits in between the songs, yeah. right? Yeah. So you've got to talk about what you've just listened to or just watched, and then you've got to talk about what you're going to listen to or going to watch. So we, we were doing that together, and we just got on really well, and the boss kind of realised that there was some synergy between us and a, a good friendship, and it just worked. And we also shared a flat for five years together at the same time, <laughs> oh, wow. so we became mates doing that. Yeah. Yeah, so I, it was like a student flat. But we were doing kids' TV at the same time. Oh. <laughs> so it was carnage at home. Yeah, it really was carnage. It was meant to be. Imagine having your student years, but whilst you're working but doing children's oh. on, ta- on tally at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. I, I'd love to see just you all be all living together then being on TV <laughs> if my, if my uh, future housemates are listening um, I hope that you're up for being a double act <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the aim that's the aim yes. oh. yeah and like yeah with all talking about uh, radio and DJing why did you guys decide to start DJing where did that kind of uh, well, w- when we shared the flat actually uh, oh. we both had a love of dance music at the time this was mid 90s and um, dance music was huge back then you know mm. Ibiza was really becoming a big thing so we decided we'll get some decks at home, vinyl decks. Yeah. So we're showing our age now. So we used to literally get vinyls and mix them together, just as yeah. a just terribly, a hobby. Terribly, yeah. really terribly. badly. Got drunk and mixed, tried to mix. But but mu- music's always been a massive passion for us, especially dance music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so to to have the opportunity now, our, our knackered old ages of 46, 48, to be able to well, go out and play drum and bass and house music. We didn't doing great. it professionally till about what? 10 Fif- years ago, 15 mm, years ago? 15 years ago, yeah, yeah. so at first it was just a hobby and then it kind of turned into a thing we did live. But to know? begin with, we started just doing the, uh, just, I mean, we started doing the, the uni gigs. 
to begin with because yeah. uh, a lot of the people there grew up watching us when they were kids and so we started mm -hmm. doing that and then and now now it's kind of really diversified and we've started then going doing festivals then the festivals started booking us from doing DJing at family times to the evenings like oh, yeah. and then we got booked by a festival called Boomtown oh yes which Boomtown. is like a massive drum and bass hedonistic festival yeah we covered it last year actually. oh did yeah. you yeah. We you were there uh, yeah, some of our uh, marketing team were there last yeah, it's year. Good. It's yeah. crazy, isn't it? What a, yeah, I mean, what absolutely. Massive. For those who don't know what Boontown is, so just to paint a picture, I think everyone will know it, it's created <laughs> by set, set designers <laughs> who make a village of a of a town. So there's like a town hall with the clocks and uh, and shops and stuff like that. It's really weird being there, yeah. and it's pretty full on, but great fun. So we did that. We DJ there, did a drum bass set there, and the place just kicked off. And now we get we've been booked for ballmasters and all sorts. It's oh, great. Wow. Yeah, it really, we put like loads of social media TikToks out and they blew up. Oh, did they? Yeah, Boomtown was like the reason we have so many people yeah. join this oh, year because huge. of our ah, coverage. Ah, right. Yeah. I, was in a, I was in a bank in Sheffield. The guy behind the thing, I asked him to sign me a form off or something, if something really boring for a bank. And he was just a guy doing his job two o'clock on an afternoon on Tuesday. And he went, you're Dick from Dick and Dumb, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, um, oh yeah, I saw you at Boomtown. I was like, what, you? It's just this guy in a suit and tie in a bank from Sheffield and he's been to Boomtown watching me doing drum and bass. You never know who goes to Boomtown. Oh, no, no, you don't. Oh, no, you no. Oh, yeah. Like what, what sort of DJs would you say have like influenced you in that sort of realm of drum and bass? Well, it's not just drum and bass. We, 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 we've been booked for exclusively drum and bass festivals and drum and bass clubs. But really, our, our dance music uh, is quite varied. So we, we love anyone from, like, Norman Cook is, is a yeah, massive influence for us because when you go to watch him gig, he will play, he'll drop anything from house to dance to hip hop yeah. uh, to, like, a bit of Bob Marley. He'll play anything. And so we really kind of like taking a crowd on that journey. One minute, they're just kind of like, you know, dancing to 125 BPM. The next minute, you ramp it up to you know, 180 and you're doing drum and bass. So, so our influence would be the people, like, factor. people like him, people like the Chemical Brothers, Paul Oakenfold, uh, who else? After the 90s, say? wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was actually back in the very early 90s, I was into like hardcore and, you know, rave music. Prodigy. Like, the old school rave oh, scene. Yeah, we just had so. that on our automation. We had yeah. Outer Space just on there. And we oh, yeah. Just well, there you are, yeah. Took before you guys came <laughs> exactly. in. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just, I just, I've still got that on cassette. I'm the reason it's on our system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. There like, you are, yeah. my, my parents are massive fans of it. So I was like, oh, I'll just add it because that's what I grew up on. I was yeah. like, yeah. has Classic. to go there. Um, weirdly, I was in a, a shop today, Prodigy, uh, Prodigy, and I didn't know that they had remixed Ghost Town. Oh, Did wow. you know that? No, no, no that. we didn't yeah. know that. Oh, Did yeah. you know that? Can, mm. can we t put requests in for the next song? Yeah, can we? We can yeah. after yeah. this. I know yeah. it's pre recorded. Ghost Town. Uh, and then we'll when um, we play it out every time we play yeah. it out we'll put it on afterwards yes. <laughs> we'll just make sure go. of it it's just be a really long sweeper before we put yeah. that on <laughs> so what would you guys say is like the favourite your favourite TV programme that you've worked on uh, well it's got to be Dick and Dom in a Bungalow hasn't it because that's kind be. of the thing that made us a name and you know everyone remembers really and we did so many different programmes on CBBC over the years but that's the one that stands out I suppose yeah. because TV was different back then you could do shows like that you can't yeah. do those shows anymore no. You know, I mean, it was a bit naughty. It was a bit anarchic. It was a bit, you know, irreverent. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be allowed to do that on TV no. anymore. So we were lucky at the time that we had those years where you could still try new things and be creative. Yeah. So yeah, I reckon mm -hmm. it's got to be that show. Yeah. But a lot, a lot of the uh, students who will be listening to this now will probably be more of a similar age to remembering Splat a lot. Yeah, Splat, yeah. which was a, a game like show. Diddy which TV. Had I remember Defenders of a Castle. Of Do you remember it? <laughs> yeah. Now we went out and shot that in Canada. That we oh. went all the way, even though we all were just way. doing that on green screen. Um, we could have shot it on green screen <laughs> in the UK, but uh, it was more uh, kind of financially beneficial for them to fly us out there and film against green screen in Canada. Oh, wow. So we went all the way out there for a month. So if yeah. there's any of the TV shows, if you could, if there was like no rules and you could bring any of them back, which one would you bring back? What, of our shows or any shows? Of your shows. Uh, we always said that it'd be great to bring back a show that we did called oh, the, Le yeah. the Legend of Dick and Dom, oh, which was uh, it was like basically it was like yeah. Game of Thrones before Game of Thrones, yeah, but but a stupid it. version of it. Yeah. It was so ridiculous, mm -hmm. and it was um, we because we we did three series of that, and it, we left it open ended. There's unfinished business to be. There was there. unfinished. The last scene was us saying goodbye to each other. There was Manitou the Wizard. There was uh, Chloe, who was like uh, a thief. Lutin. Lutin. Uh, sorry, yeah, Lutin the thief. 
and um, and we all face each other and go, well, goodbye, folks. And then then this messenger boy runs up going, Dick and Dom, Manzul, Lutin, do you want, uh, messages come from the king saying that something's <laughs> happening. Do you want to do it? And we look at each other and go, well, shall we? And that was it. So it's That's ended. how it ended. The problem yeah. is we're really old now, so it's probably where it happened anymore. That was like it'd be one of those about it'd be, fifteen years. It'd be one ago. of those things where the opening scene is us <laughs> in our beds, <laughs> us in our beds dying, and some young <laughs> yeah. pr- young princess <laughs> literally saying, half we'll an ki- episode. We'll continue the quest for you. Everyone like it's a really long quest, laugh. <laughs> but it was it was great because like the guy that played our dad, the king, was Brian Blessed. I don't oh know no. if you know Brian yeah. Blessed. Yeah. And I, yes. You know to have people like him uh, in the cast with us was was really yeah, amazing. It was a good show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was great. That Maybe was it can be your children this time. Continuation. Well, mine's yeah. only, my kid's only two and a half, so that probably... That'd be an interesting yeah. one. <laughs> it would be very interesting. <laughs> yeah. We just, just wanted to ask dancing. if you kind of have like any advice for mm. anyone starting in media or who wants a career in media. Well, I mean, it's totally different now to when we first started out, because yeah. back then it was hospital radio and writing letters and sending tapes and in the post. Now it's literally all digital. It's online, isn't it? I mean, you guys these days, you can literally just get your phone <laughs> and just film something and yeah. put it up and someone might spot you. So that's the way to do it. Just keep uploading stuff. If you want to be in the business, get it on socials now, nowadays. But my golden bit of advice is manifest Manifest. and never, (laughs) ever give up. Dom's into putting it out there. Absolutely never. If you doubt yourself for one second then it's not going to happen. Actually, that is the one best bit of advice I got given by someone that was... Uh, Simon Mayo, his name was, a DJ who's now uh. on Greatest Hits Radio. Uh, he used to be on Radio 1 back in the day. And he wrote me a letter back, and in massive capital letters, he just put, be determined. Mm. That's it. Never lose your yeah. determination. Never give up. So if you lose that, you, you'll never do it. But if like you keep that, sense it. you'll make yeah. it. Never have That's a... Fa- we heard uh, an interesting interview on, on Virgin Radio with Chris Evans, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who uh, very much believes in manifestations as well. And his bit of advice was, don't never have a, a fallback option. If you have a fallback option, then you don't fully believe that you're going to get yeah. that job. Because you, you, you need a second option. It doesn't exist. Or as Anthony Hopkins says, believe. 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 <laughs> believe. I don't believe, know believe, believe. Have a look, Google that, because that is hilarious. That Anthony, Anthony Hopkins, Hopkins believe. believe. Yeah. Believe. So there you go. That's the final final word of the interview. Yes. Believe. Thank, thank you guys so thank much. You. Thank coming. you guys so much. Yeah. No worries. Lovely to speak to you. Yeah.